In one of the hearts of London, an old live music venue, The Hundred Club, still plays music every night of the week, since 1942 in fact. It is claimed by many to be one of the most culturally significant arenas in British history. But, by Christmas 2010, so no less than one month from the time of this recording, The Hundred Club will close. I cannot believe that this country would let this venue go just like that. Just about everyone who's picked up an instrument of any description has, has played that. Everyone from Louis Armstrong to the Sex Pistols, from the White Stripes to the Rolling Stones has played here. This is the place where one night B.B. King got up on stage and jammed all night long. This is the place the Rolling Stones chose to have a private party. This is the place where the Sex Pistols became known. I am not no me too. Your hairs on the back of your neck stand up when you walk in there and you look at the stage and you think, oh God, all those people have played there. It's the Tower of London of rock venues. It really is more important than almost any other rock venue in the capital city of Britain. This is a place you've got to play. You're not a musician until you've played the Hundred Club. They have bands there every night of the week and it's purely an issue of money to keep it going. The rent increased by 45% three years ago. Uh, that was the second increase of 45%. Couldn't afford the rent, couldn't afford the rates, both gone. Thank you very much, good evening. some fantastic moments. The specials here last year, that was fantastic because they were still just as energetic and just as powerful as they were all that time back. I think probably the biggest highlight would have been seeing Joe Strummer in 2001, I think it was, when he played here with the Mescaleros. <laughs> The uh, range of music has been fantastic and long before I came in, my dad, um, when he took the club over and in fact named it the 100th Club in 1964, uh, he used to have residences here with the Kinks, with the Stones, with the high numbers that went on to become the Who, uh, as well as a lot of the, the blues greats like Muddy Waters and people like that all played here. I mean, it's just been, yeah, I mean, it, nothing's off limits really. One, one, two, three, four. Oh, it's had every type of clientele you can think of. I have played at the 100 Club 20 times um, with four different bands, of which you probably hadn't heard of any of them. What's amazing about the 100 Club is that there are jazz venues like Ronnie Scott's and there are rock venues like Dingwall's, but the 100 Club is probably the only one that knows no boundaries, and it's the size of a car. <laughs> In the 40s and 50s, the 100 Club was synonymous with jazz. In the 60s, it was R&B. In the 70s, punk rock, Sex Pistols had a residency at the 100 Club. Fast forward to the 90s, Sway played there, Oasis played there, and then the noughties, that decade, the gig that made the White Stripes what they are, which is now one of the biggest bands in the world, was at the 100 Club. For me, it was September 1992, seeing Suede, um, do, before they'd had an album out, do this absolutely astonishing gig, which made you feel that something very, very special was going on. And it was, and the 100 Club was a part of that, and subsequently became a great indie venue. This is a venue that, for what, six decades, has produced gigs that have been some of the most historic gigs that have happened. <laughs> At least there's still a venue in the West End. There were 100, 120 clubs like this in Soho and the West End alone. Now there's just us, Ronnie Scotts, 
uh, and the borderline, I think that's it. I think it's virtually impossible um, to continue, which is a real shame, but I'm afraid that's what England is in 2010. <laughs> All the old venues in London are just being wiped out for one reason or another. There's lists of clubs that have, and pubs and backrooms and theatres and things that have all closed down for one reason or another. The history of London venues, as I've seen it in the past 20 years, is just one of closure. It's just a venues are levelled to make room for tube stations and shops and commercial properties. Well, the 12 bar in Denmark Street apparently is closing. The cavern's gone. You know, the marquee's gone. The Astoria has disappeared in London. We know why that's had to go. It's all to do with rail links and what have you. The Fly in New Oxford Street, that's gone. My favourite club used to be the Marquee in Wardour Street. That closed down and I've regretted it ever since. The Metro, that's gone due to the cross rail. If the 100 Club goes, there will be one venue left in the West End where a band can play and that's it. There will be nowhere else. Indeed, there are less live music venues in central London than ever. Yet still, the new bands come. Hunter Club has got to be saved. Bands like us need a chance to play in venues like that. Um, it's such a great honour to play on the same stage as people like that. like a place that everyone knows and remembers for good gigs. Everywhere in this place is getting knocked down and the 100 Club is like one of the only places that's lasted and we need to keep it going. We're here tonight to raise the profile of the 100 Club and to raise awareness of our campaign. Well, the biggest thing we're looking for tonight is publicity, basically. If we get some press out tonight, if we get some more awareness and people just basically are made aware that the 100 Club can close and when it's gone a lot of people will be very, very sorry. I really want a venue that bands can go and play and it's a lovely, lovely size, they're going to feel really, really happy there and I want my daughter to be there and I want other, you know, the future um, to be with there. It's not only about the past, it's about the future, so long live the 100 Club. Thank you all for coming, firstly. Um, we started this The Save the 100 Club campaign wants to turn the club into a non-profit organisation. But to do so, they need to raise half a million pounds in less than a month. That's, you know, unrealistic, really. So, we don't really know how much we need is the honest answer. We don't really know. What we're proposing is to have a committee of six people who don't make any money out of the club. And it's sponsored by companies and by donations and obviously by the income. And it would be great if it could be a really profitable club that was run by the people, for the people. So the 100 Club! Yeah. The 100 Club may close by Christmas. We need to raise half a million pounds. The alternative is to hope a sponsor comes along. But they must hurry up. To keep the 100 Club open, we need somebody to step up to the plate, so to speak. We need a sponsor or we need someone to invest in the club. What it needs is someone that can calm us through these uh, choppy waters and into calmer seas and then work together with us to help brand the place properly. Then that way the long-term future might become secure. So there you have it. Everyone is on tenderness to keep the 100 Club open. Even Sir Mick Jagger himself. I think it's what's important is that you have places of a, a, a certain intimacy and size that new bands can experiment in. There's not that many places in London, or indeed any city, but there's not that many great places in London that you can say that about. So whether you're an oldie or the hottest new talent out there looking for a break, the 100 Club needs to live on. We need chances to follow in the footsteps of the best bands in the world, and we're never going to get that if they close 100 Club, so please save 100 Club. It's a part of history, a part of London, like it's been running for since like the 40s. We need to keep it going, if possible. It's important to keep the 100 Club open, not just as a symbol of live music in this country, not just as a museum of rock where once bands play, 
but also as a place to go and see bands in a city that surely is one of the most important places in music history, past, present and future. To me, more than anything, the 100 Club staying open is hugely important, whichever form it takes. You won't notice it's gone until it's gone, and once it's gone, that's it. It's not coming back. Our music in England is important worldwide, and if there's no clubs like the 100 Club, maybe it won't be. Yeah.